very optimistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mahmoud, I want to turn now um, to the decade since 9-11. You wrote um, Good Muslim, Bad Muslim about the relationship between the Cold War and ha what happened subsequent to it, including the 9-11 attacks and now the war on terror. So I just want to play a comment um, from this weekend's 9-11 commemoration ceremony at the Pentagon. U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta said the United States will never stop fighting those who were responsible. To this day, and by these memorials to each victim, we pledge to never forget the enemy that made this happen, why we fight them, and why we will never stop fighting them to make sure that what happened here and in New York City and in that field in Pennsylvania never happens again. Uh, Mahmoud, your, your comments? Well, um, the problem is defining who they intend to fight. <clears throat> because uh, um, those who carried out the attacks on 9-11 were not a state. They were not an army, navy, or air force. Um, there have been uh, two wars since then, wars of choice, against existing states. Um, nobody believes and nobody claims anymore that these were involved in the fighting. So this has just become a blank check uh, for what looks more and more like a rogue state, to go around fighting whoever wants to fight. But I think the, uh, the, the, the more serious question um, is, is, uh, is its impact on American society itself. Um, there is a huge problem at home. I mean, you know, one out of every six Americans is, is, is poor. Um, popular programs, welfare programs are being cut. Uh, the Cold War ended. Uh, the Soviet Union reformed in some ways. It, the losing side has to reform, right? It's the winning side which doesn't reform. And it hasn't reformed. And this is a program for not reforming. This is a program for continuing the militarization of the U.S. So you see the poverty as a direct consequence of these wars that have been waged since 9-11? Well, I see the poverty not as a direct consequence, but... Um, it, it changes the map, the choices, uh, what's at stake, in a sense. Um, you know, Americans are led to believe by their public intellectuals <clears throat> and by their, by their, by their leadership uh, that this enemy is not just these handful of people, but it's a large section of the globe uh, something called Islam, something called Muslims, in a sense, um, and that it's external. It's external. I mean, there's a, there's a, a complete uh, reluctance to acknowledge that the ways in which Islam is internal to the U.S., a complete reluctance to acknowledge that Islam in the U.S. is not simply the guys who came off the plane from South Asia and West Africa and the and Middle East over the last 10 years, but actually has been as old as the American Republic. Uh, you know, eight, nine percent of the slaves were Muslims. Uh, half the Muslims in the U.S. are African Americans. Who knows that? Right? They all look at Park Slope and listen. They think that the Muslims are the people who came 10 years ago, five years ago. They are the rich sheikhs. Um, but they are part of American society. They are Malcolm X. They are Muhammad Ali. They, you know, these, these are the Muslims of the U.S. And so this inability to acknowledge that they are dealing with a group which is as internal. It's not just external. It's, um, I think these questions are not being uh, 
confront it. You come back from Uganda in the midst of the presidential race uh, for next year, 2012. There was a big Tea Party debate the other night that CNN had. Um, toward the end of the debate, Ron Paul, one of the Republican candidates, the Congress member from Texas, drew boos from the crowd and a rebuke from other candidates uh, when he criticized U.S. foreign policy, discussing the roots of 9-11. We played this for Noam Chomsky yesterday. We'd also like to get your comment, Professor Mondani. We're under great threat because we occupy so many countries. We're in 130 countries. We have 900 bases around the world. We're going broke. The purpose of al-Qaeda was to attack us, invite us over there where they can target us. And they have been doing it. They have more attacks against us and the American interest per month than occurred in all the years before 9-11. But we're there occupying their land. And if we think that we can do that and not have retaliation, we're kidding ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. What would we do if another country, say China, did to us what we do to all those countries over there? So this whole idea that the whole Muslim world is responsible for this and they're attacking us because we're free and prosperous, that is just not true. Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda have been explicit. They have been explicit, and they wrote and said that we attacked, we attacked America because you had bases on our holy land in Saudi Arabia, you do not give Palestinians a fair treatment, and you have been bombing. I didn't say that. I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand what the motive was behind the bombing. At the same time, we had been bombing and killing hundreds of thousands of Iraqis for 10 years. Would you be annoyed? If you're not annoyed, you, then there's some problem. Yes, that was Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul, uh, the Republican Congress member from Texas, who is the father of Rand Paul, the Kentucky senator, Mahmoud Mamdani. Well, I've missed this completely, you know. Uh, and and uh, I'm very thankful that, that you've given me an opportunity to listen to this. He sounds like a professor. He's, he, I mean, he's trying to educate his audience, and the ed audience is not ready to be educated. It wants to be rallied to, to a cause <laughs> that it doesn't have to think about. Um, but but it's great that this is part of the public debate in in, in the U.S. today. It's a, it's 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 obviously a, a fringe voice by you know. Do you think the, the, President Obama would ever sound like that? No, 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 no. I don't think so. He could have sounded like that in a classroom, but I don't think he would sound like that on a public platform. Um, not, not after um, drones and uh, uh, and after after you know the responses to to the whistleblowers on WikiLeaks and uh, look, you know, during Bush, we used to think that the problem was. Uh, the rule of law had been suspended, and there were all these prisons all over the place. Um, and, and now the preferred strategy is assassination. Uh, uh, it's not taking people to prisons. There's no need for Abu Ghraib or Guatemala or anything. It's just to uh, unleash a drone. So um, it's. And I'm not saying this, I'm not connecting this directly with Obama or anything, but the point is that that's where things are moving. That's nobody can deny it. that's where they're moving, and we can discuss who is responsible. Um, but that's the direction in which in which things are moving, and 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 I think that's that's cause for huge concern. Well, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, you mentioned uh, one in six Americans are poor, and that's going to be our next segment. I want to thank you so much for being with us. Professor Mahmoud Mamdani is just back from Kampala, Uganda, after several months, written extensively on regional global implications of NATO's intervention in Libya. He teaches here in New York at Columbia University, author of a number of books, among the books, uh, Saviors and Survivors, as well as Good Muslim, Bad Muslim, America, the Cold War, and the Roots of Terror. This is Democracy now we'll be